The ongoing protests in Israel, particularly in Tel Aviv, reflect a growing national frustration with the Israeli government's stance on the Gaza conflict and the failure to secure the release of hostages held by Palestinian resistance groups. More than half a million demonstrators have taken to the streets, besieging government buildings and key areas in central Israel, demanding an end to the hostilities and the immediate return of detainees. This surge in public anger points to a deeper political crisis, one that has escalated from mere dissatisfaction to widespread calls for early elections, signalling a loss of confidence in Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's leadership. Netanyahu's refusal to negotiate a hostage deal is seen by many as a political miscalculation that places his own career above the lives of Israeli citizens. His administration's hardline policies toward Gaza and the ongoing war have not only prolonged the conflict, but also contributed to a domestic revolt, with protesters now calling for a change in government. This wave of discontent is reminiscent of other political movements that have toppled long-standing regimes, and there is growing speculation that Netanyahu's grip on power may be faltering. Some reports even suggest that the intensity of the protests has forced Netanyahu to evacuate Tel Aviv and retreat to a bunker, highlighting the severe political pressure he now faces. The broader implications of this political unrest could extend far beyond Netanyahu's potential ouster. There are growing concerns that the sustained failure to negotiate with Palestinian groups and end the conflict could lead to more extreme consequences for Israel's political system. In fact, some analysts believe that the situation could spiral into a coup or a color revolution, driven by the widespread frustration with the government's inability to resolve the hostage crisis and bring an end to the violence. Such scenarios, while speculative, underline the precarious position in which Israel finds itself caught between external conflict and internal instability. This growing instability has not gone unnoticed by international intelligence agencies. High-level figures like CIA Director William Burns and MI6 Chief Richard Moore have expressed concerns about the trajectory of the conflict and the risks of continued escalation. Both Burns and Moore have reportedly pushed hard for a diplomatic solution, urging restraint and advocating for a ceasefire. Their involvement underscores the global significance of the conflict, as both intelligence chiefs have indicated that a resolution will require significant political compromises from both sides. Burns, in particular, has been working closely with mediators from Qatar and Egypt in an attempt to broker a ceasefire deal. His remarks at a recent event in London suggest that a detailed proposal is nearing completion, with hopes that it could be presented to both Israel and Palestine within days. However, Burns emphasized that the most challenging aspect of the negotiations remains unresolved, as the final 10% of the agreement involves difficult compromises that neither side seems eager to make. Despite the progress that has been made, the lack of political will to finalize the agreement poses a significant obstacle. The involvement of the international community, particularly through figures like Burns and Moore, adds another layer of complexity to the situation. While diplomatic efforts continue behind the scenes, the political landscape within Israel remains volatile, with demonstrators demanding change and Netanyahu's government increasingly isolated. This dynamic has led to speculation about what the future holds for the country, with some warning that the ongoing conflict, combined with domestic unrest, could spell the beginning of the end for Israel's current political structure. As the protests continue to gain momentum, it is becoming increasingly clear that the public outcry against Netanyahu's policies is not just about the hostages, but about a broader dissatisfaction with his administration's handling of the Gaza conflict.
The demand for early elections reflects a desire for political change, a recognition that the current government's approach is not only unsustainable, but also potentially dangerous for the future of the state. If Netanyahu continues to resist calls for compromise and refuses to engage in meaningful negotiations, the situation could worsen, both within Israel and in its dealings with Gaza. Meanwhile, protest organizers estimate that around 500,000 people gathered in Tel Aviv alone, with an additional 250,000 demonstrating in other cities around the country, including Jerusalem, Haifa, Beersheba, and Rishon Letzion. These protests are not only about the hostages, but also about a broader dissatisfaction with the government's handling of the Gaza conflict. The discovery of the bodies of six hostages from a tunnel in Rafa has fueled this anger, particularly as the government has yet to finalize a deal to free those still in captivity. The autopsies of Hirsch Goldberg Polin, Eden Yerushalmi, Ori Danino, Alex Labanov, Carmel Gat, and Almog Sarusi revealed they had been murdered just days earlier. This has only intensified the public outcry against Netanyahu's administration, which many blame for the ongoing hostilities and the failure to secure the release of the remaining hostages. In Tel Aviv, protesters blocked major thoroughfares, including the Ayalon Highway, while others gathered near Netanyahu's private residence in Caesarea, calling for his resignation. Mr. Prime Minister, a few days ago you stood in front of the families of the captives and said sorry that we're not able to bring them back alive. But what kind of forgiveness is that? If you do not intend to change your ways, we will not forgive. Demonstrations in Jerusalem were similarly charged, with protesters outside the Prime Minister's residence demanding an end to the war and a new general strike to ramp up economic pressure on the government. Protesters carried yellow flags symbolizing the movement for the hostages' release and chanted slogans denouncing what they see as the regime's lies and its inability to provide security for the country. That's an, a shame that good government represents us. It's a far away from what the people of Israel thinking, the majority. Families directly affected by the conflict have been at the forefront of these protests, blaming Netanyahu for the continued captivity of the hostages. Gal Goran, who lost both parents to Hamas violence, voiced the widespread belief that Netanyahu has failed to act decisively to bring the hostages home. His call to push forward with the protests until the situation is resolved encapsulates the determination of the demonstrators, many of whom see this as a critical moment for the country's future. Former hostages have also joined the protests, adding their voices to the growing discontent. Danielle Aloni, who was held in Gaza, criticized Netanyahu for his recent public missteps, including his mistaken references to the October 7 attacks. Aloni's remarks highlighted the suffering of those still trapped in Gaza's tunnels, drawing attention to leaked reports that Netanyahu had downplayed their plight. Her testimony about the conditions in the tunnels underscored the urgency of securing a deal to bring the hostages home, an issue that has now taken center stage in the national discourse. The participation of figures like Andrei Kozlov, who was freed from Palestinian captivity in June, has further intensified the pressure on Netanyahu's government. Kozlov's expression of guilt for having survived while others have not resonates deeply with many Israelis, reinforcing the belief that time is running out for those still in captivity. As the protests gain momentum, it is clear that the issue of the hostages has become a focal point of broader political dissatisfaction. The government's inability to secure a deal not only raises questions about its effectiveness in handling the conflict, but also about its ability to protect Israeli citizens. The growing calls for a hostage deal, combined with the demand for Netanyahu's resignation, reflect a deepening crisis of confidence in the country's leadership.